We've just returned from our second cruise on Norwegian Cruise Line's newest ship, Norwegian Prima. Following our first cruise review, we received a lot of questions and comments about the ship. And recently, a lot of the reviews about Norwegian Prima haven't been that positive. Well, is this negativity really justified? In this video, we take a look at the common complaints we hear from cruisers to see if the Norwegian Cruise Line fans are right about this brand new ship up next. Welcome aboard cruisers, I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where I help you see the world one port at a time. Now, as a couple that's been on over 55 cruises with 14 different cruise lines, one cruise line we actually really like is Norwegian Cruise Line. We're big fans of their Breakaway and Breakaway Plus class ships. So when they announced Norwegian Prima, we were really interested in checking out this brand new class of ship. Well, did Norwegian make a big mistake with this ship? We hear a lot of complaints about Norwegian Prima. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at those complaints to see if they really are justified. Now, one common knock we hear about Norwegian Prima has to do with the decor of the ship. Many claim that it's too bland and that the common areas lack character or personality. One individual replied that the ship isn't even fun. Are the NCL fans right about the decor on Norwegian Prima? Well, it is true that the ship has a more subtle, neutral color palette, but actually, we're big fans of this design change. It's actually similar to luxury cruise lines like Viking, with the beechwood tones, pops of nautical blue, and diverse art collection, it makes the ship feel more upscale and sophisticated, which is what the cruise line was going for with this brand new ship. When compared to other ships in the fleet with loud theming, Norwegian Prima offers a more refined and elegant atmosphere. We also like that this design aesthetic carries throughout the ship in both the interior and outdoor public spaces. The new Ocean Boulevard is a big upgrade from the waterfront, giving the area a more beach club-like feel. Further, contrary to many other cruisers, we actually like the design of the Penrose Atrium. Others find the design to be rather basic and closed off, and not as inviting as other Norwegian Cruise Line ships. While some say it resembles a shopping mall, we actually liken it to a grand hotel lobby. We would agree that the Penrose Atrium is a completely new design and not as flashy as 678 Ocean Place on the Breakaway and Breakaway Plus class ships. However, the new atrium on Norwegian Prima is actually more functional. On Norwegian Prima, the shopping, coffee shop, and support services are all centralized in this inviting and fluid setup. The ship smartly uses the space to include all of these amenities, but still offers an open three-deck central area that can become a gathering space for cruisers. Tucking the guest services and shore excursions desk out of the way, the central atrium creates more intimate spaces for socializing. From the coffee shop seating on deck seven to live music on deck six in the evenings, we think the Penrose atrium is more dynamic than other NCL ships. While the vibe might be more understated elegance, theming is not absent on the ship. For instance, Le Bistro features oversized chandeliers and has a very regal look. Los Lobos offers a Latin-inspired menu with an equally well-appointed dining room. The vibrant colors and more seaside look of the local bar and grill is a nice upgrade too. Not to mention, the Hudson's Bay Dining Room offers stunning 270-degree ocean views. Another problem many cruisers cite about Norwegian Prima has to do with reservations. Specifically, cruisers have reported difficulty getting reservations to nightly entertainment. It is true in the past, you were able to pre-book reservations on the NCL website for entertainment. Honestly, the same was true for larger ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet as well. However, since the cruise restart, this has not been the case with either cruise line. With that said, if entertainment is your thing, then you should make your reservations as soon as you board the ship. Currently, cruisers can book shows using the touch screens in front of the elevators. Or you can head to Sid Norman's when you board the ship on day one to book directly with the entertainment staff. On both cruises, we booked our shows as soon as we board the ship and were able to secure reservations for all the shows without any issues. For our cruises, there were three main theater shows and two different comedians. Regardless of the itinerary, there should be a few showings of the Donna Summer Musical, Noise Boys, and The Price is Right in the Prima Theater. We will admit that on our first eight-day cruise on Norwegian Prima, there were not enough comedy shows. Though, on our second four-day sailing, there were two comedy shows each night, with each comedian flip-flopping early and late set times. Even with reservations, like any mega ship, you do need to show up early to get optimal seats. 
we always get to an entertainment venue at least 30 minutes before showtime to find seats. We can agree that the entertainment spaces might be smaller on Norwegian Prima, but even cruising on one of Royal Caribbean's newer ships, optimal seats and entertainment venues are gone way before showtime. For us, we had the most difficulty getting seats in Sid Norman's poorhouse. This venue has stunning theming and amazing band. However, you're not able to make reservations for these rock shows. Currently, with the band only playing three shows over a typical week, getting seats at this venue is almost impossible. Cruises report lining up over an hour before showtime. For our cruises, we opted to just arrive 30 minutes before showtime for a standing room only view. Aside from making the venue bigger on future ships, the only other solution we see for NCL is making this a reservation only space on select nights or adding several more showtimes during the cruise for these themed rock shows. Now, the wife and I are big fans of several of the bars and lounges found on the Breakaway and the Breakaway Plus class ships. I'm a big fan of the District Brew House. As a beer lover, I love the selection there, as well as the homey feel and the leather couches. The wife's a big fan of the Sugar Mojito Bar. She likes the fruity drinks there, as well as the festive vibe. So we were a bit disappointed when we found out that neither one of those bars are gonna be at Norwegian Prima. And the fact that all the bars and lounges on the ship are brand new to the fleet. Yet, we quickly found some new favorites on board the ship. The Belvedere Bar on Deck 6 was our go-to later in the evenings. I was a big fan of the Bourbon Myth, and Heidi enjoyed the All About That Basil cocktail. These signature cocktails, crafted by the land-based Bar Lab, offer a nice alternative to our usual drinks. The Metropolitan Bar on Deck 6 is home to sustainable drinks. While many raved about the La Madrina, I preferred the Croissant Mai Tai, and Heidi enjoyed the Cucumber Cool. Not to mention, this venue now features live music in the evenings. Other on-tap cocktails also quickly became our go-to libations. The fruity vodka-based Red Bubbles or the signature smoked margarita were favorites for my wife. On this new standard menu, I oscillated between the monkey business, which featured peanut butter whiskey, as well as my usual go-to, the sidecar. Needless to say, we didn't find any issues using our Norwegian Cruise Line drink package on Norwegian Prima. One thing we're actually surprised to hear from frequent and sale cruisers is that there are too many upcharges on Norwegian Prima. Frankly, most NCL mega ships offer several upcharge activities. To us, this is no different than the Breakaway or the Breakaway Plus class ships. Yes, the more unique attractions do cost a fee. Thus, we just budget accordingly when cruising with NCL. Norwegian Prima's three-story speedway costs extra, but in fact, it's the same price as the go-karts on the other NCL ships. The Galaxy Pavilion also found on several other NCL ships is an upcharge across the fleet. So it's no surprise to us that this venue costs more money on Norwegian Prima. Honestly, there are a number of onboard activities that are completely free. The new dry slides, the drop and the rush are complimentary. The outdoor sports area, the stadium is also complimentary. The venue includes a variety of activities like shuffleboard, ping pong, a version of beer pong, and a pickleball court. The wave water slide is also free. Not to mention all the other included activities around the ship, like the interactive art tour, karaoke, trivia, game shows, and more. However, there are some new activities on Norwegian Prima where we feel the upcharges are questionable. For one, there's the new Bullseye Darts Pub. The lounge lets up to six individuals play 50 minutes of darts for $40. While we think the price might be a little steep, let's just be fair. If the cruise line didn't charge, people would spend all day there and other cruises wouldn't have a chance to use the facilities. One upcharge we do find hard to justify is mini golf. Well now, technically the cruises we've been on, tea time the mini golf has been free due to technical issues, but the cruise line is planning to charge for this activity. Now, many other cruise lines do have mini golf courses. And honestly, it's always included in the cruise fare. Yet NCL is trying to justify the cost of the mini golf because cruisers can win prizes. We suggest just getting rid of the free cruise grand prize and making mini golf complimentary. After all, getting a free go-kart ride 
or a free Galaxy Pavilion game for a hole in one on hole nine really wouldn't hurt the cruise line's bottom line. Similar to the upcharge activities, another question we get has to do with families on Norwegian Prima. Many are wondering if their kids will have a good time on Norwegian Prima or if they'll be bored. Now, to be completely honest, we don't have any kids <laughs> and we just sail the two of us. So we don't have any firsthand knowledge of what it's like cruising on Norwegian Prima as a family. It is true that the cruise line removed the teens area entourage. Now teens and young children share a rather small Splash Academy on Deck 15 with additional activities occurring at other venues around the ship. As for the programming or the youth activity staff, we do not know how it compares to other NCL ships. We would expect the same type of events and organized activities for junior cruisers are available on Norwegian Prima. Further, there is no arcade on this new ship or the games often found in the local bar and grill. Yes, there are all the outdoor amenities like the stadium and the slides, though those do close by around 6 p.m. on most days. If you're cruising with younger kids, it's important to note that there are height restrictions on the slides and other attractions. Additionally, there is only one small splash pad that is located away from the main pool area. And honestly, a splash pad is nowhere near as intricate or well-themed as the other NCL ships. In our opinion, the ship does appear to be more family friendly than perhaps it's family focused. When compared to the youth areas and activities on competitor cruise lines, it's certainly less appealing for younger cruisers. Teenagers will likely enjoy all the activities, but you will definitely need to budget in some extra money for all those attractions. Norwegian Cruise Line is the innovator of freestyle dining. Typically, the complimentary main dining rooms offer a rotational menu each evening. This menu changes nightly with a few select items that stay the same all cruise. Well, on Norwegian Prima, NCL completely changed the setup. Now the two main dining rooms, Hudson's on deck seven and the Commodore room on deck six, serve the same menu every night of the cruise. The thinking behind this change is simple. The main dining room offers a more elevated, expansive menu each night with better execution of the dishes. While this sounds good on paper, many cruisers are not happy with the new fixed menu. Based on our main dining room experiences, we would rate this menu as pretty average. While the main dining room menu on Norwegian Prima features more upscale selections, we didn't feel the food preparation was much better. I did enjoy the Asian spare ribs and coconut shrimp appetizers and the short rib entree. The wife also enjoyed the custom pasta selection. Though we really couldn't see ourselves eating here more than two or three times during a seven day cruise. With so many other great options on the ship, it's not that much of an issue for us. Honestly, given most cruisers have two specialty restaurant credits from the free at sea perk, it never made sense for the main dining room to change every night anyway. It would be nice if the Commodore room and Hudson's had their own distinct menu. So even if it stayed the same throughout the cruise, at least you'd have two different options. Of course, we like to do sit down dinner for our meals, but there are other options too that are complimentary, including the indulged food hall, the local bar and grill, and of course, the buffet. But those are also options. We have never stayed in the Haven, the exclusive ship within a ship space on Norwegian Cruise Line before. However, we did have the opportunity to stay in a penthouse suite on our last Norwegian Prima cruise. We loved our cabin and the private amenities available to Haven guests. Although regular Haven cruisers are not really impressed with the Haven on Norwegian Prima, some of the frequent critiques that we hear from them is that they don't like how the lounge is closed off and they don't like the overall layout of the private areas on deck 16 and deck 17. We must admit, we didn't like that cruisers need to take an elevator to reach the lounge or the restaurant from their cabins. In our opinion, the Haven on Norwegian Prima accomplishes its goal of being a ship within a ship. Now that the Haven is at the back of the ship, the two-story sun deck offers the best views on the entire ship. The aft infinity pool is a major upgrade from the courtyard pool found on other NCL ships. With two whirlpools, a Finnish sauna, and ice room, the sun deck is like a mini spa reserved just for Haven guests. Additionally, there is both indoor and an outdoor bar, and the Haven restaurant even offers alfresco dining. For us, the Haven restaurant definitely delivered. It provided an upscale, exquisite dining experience. The restaurant is open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
while the menu stays the same all week, the selections were an upgrade to the MDR menu and were expertly prepared. Some of my favorite dishes were the shrimp louis, surf and turf, and the cheesecake. Service too was prompt and personable at the restaurant, bars, and concierge desk. Virginia, our concierge, was very helpful and answered all of our questions. So we have no complaints whatsoever about our time in the Haven on Norwegian Prima. Norwegian Prima is 143 and a half thousand gross tons and holds just under 3,100 passengers at double occupancy. Antail boasts that Norwegian Prima offers the most outdoor space of any new build. Most of the space can be found in areas like Ocean Boulevard on deck eight, or the additional sun deck all the way forward on deck 18. What we do like all the outdoor spaces on Norwegian Prima. One of the biggest complaints we hear are that the venues are just too small on the ship. Here, we do tend to agree on this point, especially some of the indoor entertainment spaces. The Improv at Sea, the ship's comedy club, only holds 70 people. The two performances we attended were standing room only. Likewise, Sid Norman's Poor House is a popular music venue with limited seating that is gone an hour before showtime. Like the Breakaway Plus class ships, seats in the observation lounge were mostly gone by early morning on those chilly sea days as well. Like any ship, the crowd in other bars and lounges ebbs and flows throughout the night and getting seats was mostly manageable. We never had issues getting seats in the main theater either as long as we arrived about 30 minutes before showtime. Some of the dining venues do feel a bit cramped. The Indulged Food Hall, one of our favorite new spots on Norwegian Prima, is very busy during peak lunch times. Likewise, the smaller Surfside Cafe and Grill, the ship's buffet, can get crowded. The cruise line is still working out these kinks. In warmer weather, NCL has added wait staff to the outdoor seating near the Indulged Food Hall. Further, overflow seating is available for the ship's buffet down the hall in the Food Republic. The entire design of Norwegian Prima is to have a mega ship that feels more intimate. To accomplish this, the cruise line designed several smaller spaces instead of a fewer larger spaces. While in general, we do appreciate this concept, it is possible that the cruise line didn't factor in that some venues would be more popular than others. Thus, some venues should definitely have been bigger to accommodate the crowds versus some other venues that aren't as popular. Keeping with the design concept, Norwegian Prima has few open large areas and more smaller unique spaces. It's actually designed very similar to Virgin Voyages. Now some cruisers love it and others, well, hate it. We will agree it's a completely new design for Norwegian Cruise Line and much different than the Breakaway and Breakaway Plus class ship. And while it's true that some venues might just dead end or some venues are tucked away outside from other venues, it's not really difficult to find your way around after a day or two. We like that the bars and restaurants on Norwegian Prima feel more private, so we think it's worth the sacrifice. Though it is a bit surprising to us that the only way to get to the indulged food hall is by walking through the local bar. You also might miss some of the specialty restaurants if you aren't looking for them. For instance, the entrance to La Bistro is tucked around the stairwell on deck seven, removed from the rest of the public spaces and the entrance to Onda is tucked out of sight behind the whiskey bar on deck eight. When it comes to the outdoor decks, we feel a bit differently. If the ship is trying to compete with premium ships, like the Celebrity Edge class, then the pool deck falls short. It does feel small and rather closed off with the racetrack boxing in one end and the forward sun deck boxing in the other end. It also does not allow for prime sun tanning spaces as much of the area is shaded. Further, it's not visually stunning, especially with a three-story racetrack looming above the main pool. Overall, when you consider the two pools on Ocean Boulevard and the additional forward sun deck on deck 18, there is still plenty of space to relax outdoors. Yet, the pool deck certainly does not give off that same luxurious feel of Celebrity's resort deck. Another issue we found with the design of the outdoor spaces was the location of the new sports deck attractions. Both the Bullseye and Tea Time Mini Golf are located in an alley midship on Deck 18. With this design, the area creates a wind tunnel. Plus, the area is tight when there are many players in the space. Hopefully, there is some weather protection or a better layout in the future Prima class ships 
to account for these issues. Lastly, one complaint we've heard a lot has to do with the Wi-Fi and the NCL app. Many cruisers are indicating that the Wi-Fi doesn't work and that the app is spotty. And here, well, we gotta agree with you. The internet and the app were not functioning well on either one of our cruises. Now, Prima was our first sailing with NCL since the restart. So we're not sure if the internet issues are tied to the ship or are just indicative of the entire fleet. However, the internet was unbearably slow on both our Prima cruises. During our first cruise from Iceland, the internet would barely load anything. On our second trip from New York, the internet was better, but certainly not high speed. Now, we don't expect cruise ship Wi-Fi to be as fast as land-based services, but the internet on Norwegian Prima was not on par with Wi-Fi on competitor cruise lines. This does surprise us, as we would expect a brand new ship to have the appropriate infrastructure for high-speed internet. The cruise line does charge a premium for internet service that advertises streaming capabilities. While we were able to post to social media and check our email, we could not stream content or upload or download any large files. We have similar complaints about the app as well. During our two trips, the app was essentially a digital freestyle daily. We could not book any entertainment or dining through the app, Further, while it would show that we had items booked on a given day, we could not see any of our entertainment reservations. We needed to resort to our stateroom television to see those. Having sailed on all the major cruise lines recently, NCL's app ranks on the lower end in terms of functionality and capabilities. If the cruise line is trying to appeal to a younger demographic, the app definitely needs to be enhanced. Now, if this look at Norwegian Prima has piqued your interest, why not check out our complete Norwegian Prima ship tour and walkthrough? In that video, we go deck by deck, showcasing all the public venues, the restaurants, lounges, bars, entertainment spaces, and more. We cover it all in that video to help you decide if Norwegian Prima is right for your next cruise vacation.